A scent in the air triggers a vivid childhood memory. A song plays and suddenly you feel like you're back in a specific moment. You can picture everything. These instant flashbacks aren't magic. They're the result of a powerful network in your brain working behind the scenes. Now, memory in the brain is interesting as there is not one single area of your brain that handles all of your memories. We don't actually have one solid storage compartment that we can just easily open and there it all is. It's way more complex than that. So let's go over some of the parts of the brain that are involved in memory creation. We're gonna start with the hippocampus. This seahorse shaped structure deep in the brain's temporal lobe is the star of memory formation. When you experience something new, like learning someone's name or a fact for a test, the hippocampus gets to work turning that short-term memory into a long-term one. Think of it as the brain save button. Without the hippocampus, you could live in the moment, but you'd have trouble holding on to those memories for the long term. Next is the amygdala. Located near the hippocampus, the amygdala handles emotions, especially fear and excitement. And guess what? Emotions play a huge role in the formation of memories. That's why you're more likely to remember something that was scary, joyful, or embarrassing. The amygdala takes those emotional memories, making them stronger and more vivid. It's like giving the memory a bold highlight. Next is the prefrontal cortex, the part of your brain right behind your forehead. This area helps you with working memory, your brain sticky note. It's responsible for holding onto information for a short time, like when you do mental math or follow directions. It's also involved in organizing, decision-making, and recalling specific details when need be. Now let's not forget about the cerebellum and the basal ganglia. These area of your brain help with procedural memory or muscle memory. The stuff you do without really thinking, riding a bike, typing on a keyboard, playing the piano, that's your cerebellum and your basal ganglia in action, helping you to remember how to do the things even if you can't explain them step by step. And now here's something really interesting. You have people that have amnesia and cannot form new long-term memories. However, we have with psychology gone and helped people to learn how to play piano, help people ride a bike after they're already having their amnesia symptoms. And guess what? They are learning how to play piano. They just don't remember how they did it. They can sit down and they can do it. It's because this area of the brain is just going off of that muscle memory, that procedural memory. And so they're still able to learn in that area. So let's recap. The hippocampus helps you form and store new memories. The amygdala adds emotional intensity to your memories. The prefrontal cortex helps you with your working memory and your recall. The cerebellum and the basal ganglia handles habits and motor skills. Memory is not just one thing, it's a team effort. These parts of your brain work together every moment to help you store past information, stay alert in your present, and prepare for your future. Whether you're cramming for a test or replaying your favorite vacation in your head, now you know which parts of your brain are helping you to remember this information.